CataractCoach.com. A larger capsule rexus for a larger pupil. This patient has six millimeter pupils in mesopic lighting. So first hint is, look at that fixation ring compared to the corneal diameter. That white to white here is more than 12 millimeters, almost 13 millimeters. So very large white to white or corneal diameter. But interestingly, not overly myopic. The patient's only about a minus two myope. So it's going to be otherwise a routine case. But the important part here is, because the patient has large pupils in mesopic conditions. So in those twilight conditions, the patient has pupils that are about six millimeters. You want to have a rexus that's not overly small. Now, the patient enjoys the larger pupils and likes to be a little bit myopic. And as a result, the patient is very happy with the current state of vision other than the development of cataracts for the last few years. So I'm measuring there with the forceps. Going to start off getting our rexus done. So I want to aim here for a little bit bigger rexus. So my forceps are marked up at two and a half and five millimeters from the tip. But in this case, I want to get right up to the edge of where the optic is. So I want a rexus that's just a little bit less than that six millimeter optic. So maybe a 5.7, 5.8 millimeter rexus. It's hard to say exactly, but that looks pretty good. We'll get the cataract out and then I'll show you the rest of the case here. But remember, you can certainly tailor the size of the rexus to your patient. The biggest IOLs we have typically are about six millimeters in diameter. There are some six and a half and even seven millimeter lenses, but I think most of the seven millimeter lenses that I know about are PMMA, which require a very large incision and are non-foldable. So there's the nucleus, not too dense. It was mostly cortical changes here. So this will be emulsified relatively easily. And let's see, we'll feed that over the FACO probe. There's the chopper. Yeah, I don't even have to chop it. You can just tilt and tumble. Credit to Dr. Lindstrom for developing that technique, the tilt and, tilt and tumble technique. You can find that on cataractcoach.com. So if I did a small rex in this eye, I did a four millimeter rex, maybe that would be okay, but it's going to effectively make the pupil size four millimeters. Because remember, the remaining capsular bag that's there, it's not going to stay totally crystal clear and pristine forever. It may develop a haze to it. So you'll get a relative shrinking of the pupil size, and maybe that's desired for the patient, right? But in this situation, the patient understands all the issues. The patient has a, actually has a photography background and desires to stay minus two and really uses that large pupil to his benefit. So you're cleaning up the cortex. Now as the cortex comes out of the eye, you'll be able to see that rexus a little bit better. And so again, otherwise just a routine case. Looks like he's also getting a toric lens. And so cleaning up the cortex here, and then you know, the rexus will slowly come into view. So how do you get it so centered up, and how do you get the rex of the right size? You know, obviously, like anything else, it's just practice. But I think using forceps that are marked off really does make a big difference. Now, you don't have to buy any particular forceps. You can actually mark your own forceps. You'll notice that an ink mark is not going to stay on them. But you can use, like, a disposable steel keratome and score them, make some scratches at 2.5 and, and 5 millimeters from the tip of your your forceps, and that should be able to make a little groove there. Obviously, it'll damage that keratone, but it's a disposable blade anyway. There's a viscoelastic. Looks like a pretty darn good rexus there. We'll see the proof's going to be when you get the lens in the eye. So let's do a little capsule polishing here, clean up the undersurface of that anterior capsule rim, get some of that stuff off. Now, I've enhanced the red reflex here in the video post-production so that you get a really bright red reflex. It's a more enjoyable video to watch, but it also makes that look like uh, more debris than there is. So here comes the lens going in, single piece acrylic toric lens. And going that in, putting that in the capsule bag here. And let's see, moment of truth, compared to that six millimeter optic, how did we do? Remember, we also have to get this lens lined up at the appropriate torque axis. There you go, a little more polishing of the underservice of that capsule rim. There you go, get all that little debris off. And we'll aspirate all that lens material out, as well as all the viscoelastic going behind the eye well as well. And so just an interesting case here. It's always pretty routine. If you're a resident who's watching this or a fellow, you know, you're getting along. It's May or March now of your, your last year of training. And a couple more months, you're done with all your training. You need to make sure you're getting those skills up. So let's see, rotating that lens. Yeah, that looks like the perfect Rexus to me. I'm really happy with that Rexus. Rotating that lens just a little bit more. Now, you could use a femtosecond laser or other device to get the, the capsule out to be done. And obviously, that can make life a lot easier for some people. But for me, look, I did a pretty reasonable job. I'll take it. I'll take it, as I say. So there you go, lens in good position. You can see that actually torque marks on the cornea. We're lining those up with the torque marks on the IOL. I'm not looking at the black ink marks at the limbus. Those are just safety measure, just in case marks. 
So sealing up the incision, let's make sure that get that eye well appropriately positioned, toric marks lined up behind that rexus. Look at that, just like I wanted. Beautiful case, patient was happy, so was I. Thanks for watching.